Hi everybody, uh, I'm Alex Parado, um, and I'm going to be doing a playthrough of my game Tower of Dreams, and I'll be explaining some of the developer decisions and things like that, so let's get started. So this is the tutorial area, just kind of teaches you some basic stuff about moving and jumping. Fairly, fairly standard platforming stuff. Got a little wall jump here. Uh, something I am proud of with the wall jump is that um, if you just kind of hang on one wall and then just press like the button a bunch of times, like you don't have to press a direction, um, it'll still work. Because I find sometimes wall jumping can be a little unintuitive for people, so I, I was glad to be able to find a solution there. Um, next we have this part that actually tutorializes variable jump height, where you can hold the button like a really short for like a really short little hop, and then really long for like a really big leap. Um, and you know, I. A lot of games just kind of have this inherently, but I think it's not the best that sometimes they don't tutorialize them, so I wanted to make sure people knew that was a thing, because being able to jump different uh, legs is definitely very important in this game. You know, you've got some big leaps, a uh, mixture of like big and small ones, like here you got just a little tiny one to get to the wall, so probably want to make sure that people know that. Anyway, so here is the sword, uh, which is the main mechanic of the game, which means if we press the button again, we can slash the sword like that. Um, so I have seen this mechanic in quite a few other games and I, I it's always my favorite part of any game that it's in so I really wanted to make something that's just focused on this mechanic um, and I think the other thing it was also an intentional way to limit myself I was like okay this is really my first time making a game on this scale. I really want to, you know, make sure the character has a limited moveset so I don't, like, never release the game through scope creep. And I was like, okay, well, if I give him one attack that you just do downwards, that that's pretty limiting. I could do a lot with that, but it also will keep me very constrained to what I actually need to do, which is great. So and that was very helpful in making sure the design was really, really what I wanted, you know, and really something that... Um, reflected my goal. Oh, I didn't mean to get hit there. Reflected my goals for the game. Um, so anyway, you can see the introduction of the first two enemies here. You never have to kill enemies, uh, which is something I, I was, it was important to me. In general, there's a, this game has a pretty big focus on accessibility. Uh, it's not an easy game by any means. Uh, I've a lot of, I've had a lot of people tell me it's very difficult. Um, but I wanted to make sure that even if it was hard, it wasn't hard because you were trying to press a million buttons and there was like a bunch of complicated things to remember. Like the whole game, there you do have an optional extra button to use like an item that you'll we'll be showing off in a bit, but the core game is always just playable with one button. So it's it's not about like getting to grips with the controller. I've, I've shown this game to a good amount of people that have, don't have a ton of experience with games and especially not like console games. And I've found that even if they struggle with it because of the difficulty, they have a good time because they're at least, they feel like they're able to actually control the character properly. Um, I've made a couple of games before, um, and a lot of them were more complex than this one, and obviously I, I missed that complexity a little, but um, I, I, it made me sad a lot of the time uh, when I would make something and show it to friends and family, and they wouldn't really be able to make too much progress in it, um, just because it was... Oh, I missed that last gem there. It's a shame. Hate it when that happens. Okay, so that's the tutorial. Kind of goes over like the main mechanics we're working with, right? Um, and then this is the hub area. So you got these little mountains in the background here. Um, and the shop here, we'll show that off in just a little bit. And then this is a little training area to show off all the active items in the game. I'll let these kind of come up as they do, uh, but this is just kind of... I, it was a lot of fun putting these together, because uh, a lot of them really do radically change your moveset. Like, this one gives you an entire air dash, which was a lot of fun to make. It was a lot of work, but it was great. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really... I really want to make sure every item you get in this game feels really impactful. Something that I'm not the biggest fan of in some other roguelikes is I feel like sometimes you get an item and it's like, oh, like, plus 10%, like, crit chance. Uh, actually, it's funny, there is a crit chance item in this game, but it's, uh, I don't know, I find a lot of times they don't feel as impactful as they could, so I really want to make sure everything you pick up is something that really, like, really means a lot, you know? So we'll do... We'll do a quick little run here, um, and then I can show off a few more of the features as we go. So... Okay. Uh, it's funny we got this for the first level. This is actually the first level for the game I made. Um, this is Cannon Conundrum, uh, so it's a great way to you know show off as a first level, because it literally was. So the way this game works, I should mention this, uh, is it's only semi-randomized, um, So which was a, a big... Oh, I didn't mean to get hit there. Uh, a big swing, uh, big swing that I would say I made. It was a big risk, for sure. Oh, we got some armor. It's pretty lucky. Um, a, a lot of roguelikes are very randomized, where like you're getting random levels, entirely new random content. Um, this game is not really like that. You do... There is a lot more content than you'll ever see in the average run, um, but you get a randomly a random selection of handmade levels, such as this one, 
Um, and uh, that decision was made for a few reasons. The biggest of which being, uh, it was kind of similar to the limited move set, where if this game had like real randomization, I, that would have been like most of development, and it would have it would have tacked on another probably two years, or just like the project would have been a lot smaller scale to compensate because just getting randomization working in a platformer and making sure um, the game is actually still fun is re and works and is like you don't get soft lock is really hard. Um, that was something I knew going in, and I was like, I don't even really want to waste my time trying to. I mean, like I. I think I could have figured out something, but I think it was probably for the best that I didn't spend a bunch of time doing that. And the other reason is just, there's quite a few other roguelike platformers. Uh, there's ones like, great games like Rogue Legacy and things like that, but I find a lot of them, not all, but quite a few of them are more focused on the roguelike and like combat, and they just happen to have like platforming in them. I really wanted to make a platformer roguelike. Uh, here we can show off the shop here. Um, and being able to handcraft the levels means I can actually introduce platform mechanics that are intricate and like d develop a meaningful difficulty curve in a way that I don't think I'd really be able to, or at least not as well. I think I still could have done something, but I think it, it, it does it in a better way than if it was randomized. It also lets you practice levels that you might have problem spots, because if it's all randomized, you're never going to see that again. But uh, this way, if people have a level they're struggling with, like they'll get it again and they have the chance to, you know, um, do it over and over again. Um, and I'm hoping there's enough content where you still get a lot of variation, so you mostly just see the benefits of that system and not the downsides, which is things might get repetitive a little quicker. Um, Alright, let's see what's a good item to show off here. Uh, I'll probably be focusing mostly, there's, so there's active and passive items in the game. I will probably be mostly focusing on active items just because they're a little uh, better to show off in a video. Uh, j j just a little. Um, Alright, and this is our little level complete ranking system. This kind of ties into the whole idea of taking advantage of the fact that the content is repeated. Because it encourages you, it gives you a rank, and it encourages you to play the level again and do better. So, even if you've seen all the content, ideally you still have motivation to keep going, keep going up the tower to try to improve your score. Like, the ultimate, like, endgame challenge, uh, we're gonna skip the shot because I don't have enough gems. Um, the ultimate endgame challenge of this game, uh, is to, uh, do an entire S rank run. Which means that you do the whole thing without ever getting hit, which is very hard to do. And even if you've seen all the content, feel like you've mastered the game, that'll that'll keep you busy for a while. Um, something I really try to do is a lot of um, make a lot of like economical decisions that will allow people to get the most out of the game with like I don't want to sound lazy, but like a minimal amount of work for me, right? Like so, one of the one of the big examples of that was me adding uh, an additional difficulty called Nightmare Mode, uh, which I will maybe perhaps show off in a bit, um, and that really wasn't too hard. It just makes all the enemies stronger and you take double damage, and it took me a couple hours of work. It wasn't really too bad. Um, but I think ideally a lot of people are going to get like double the playtime out of the fact that there's a reason to play the game again after you beat it, right? Um, and that's, that's something that I really tried to focus on, was focusing my time in the best places possible. There's so much I'm excited to add in this game. It is it is going into early access after all. Oh, that's a good one to show off. Yeah, more invincibility one hit. Pretty pretty standard stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll sell the boomerang. I think you guys have seen. I would like to show off the selling animation. That, that whole thing took me a week. Um, <laughs> very happy with how it turned out, but yeah, it was definitely... It was making a lot of decisions to make sure that, like, my efforts were going in the right place, right? Because I like to think that I, I like to focus on the little details of making things feel really nice, but there is a limit to that. There, you, you need to make sure that you're not going overboard and spending a bunch of time on things that, like, are impressive, sure, but, like, don't, you know, maybe players won't see as much, or, like, that time just would be spent else, better spent elsewhere, right? I think, I think that frog animation is kind of an example of the opposite, where that was somewhere I spent a lot of time on something that's kind of minor, um, and that feels worth it because you need to you need to balance it a little, but I think it's all about getting that balance right, you know? Um, so anyway, this is the third level we're getting for floor one. You have to beat uh, three levels to move up a floor, uh, very downwell inspired that way. Um, so floor one has a pack of six levels you can get total, so in doing this run, you, you'll be seeing half the content of this first floor. Um, and then the, uh, remaining, uh, floor two has five levels and floor three has four. Um, but it may seem strange to have there be less content as you go up the tower, uh, but the reason for that is very simple, which is people are going to be playing the first floor more. Um, I mean, naturally, it's a roguelike, you're likely going to be dying. Let's do the Sprite and Prey, it's probably a little more unique here. Um, I'd be actually be able to re-roll for something more interesting. Um, 
Let me see here. Oh, good, good, good. This is one of my favorites. This is actually the first uh, item I made for the game. Uh, shock bracelet. This lets you do some shock waves. Uh, something else I should mention, I'll hopefully be able to show this off in a bit as we keep moving, but every item in this game, every passive item, I should say, is stackable. So if you get like two of them or three of them, they'll all, you'll still get an effect out of it. So for example, for the, uh, this is a good example here. Um, it shoots out one shockwave right now. If you had 10 of these, it would shoot out 10 of them, which is a lot of fun to see. It makes for very funny YouTube clips. Uh, something I'm... <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot of fun. I think some of the more crazy roguelike builds in this game definitely come from the stacking mechanics. So, I'm very excited to see what people do with that once the game is out at the time of this recording in 36 hours. <laughs> um... So yeah, um, that's kind of the idea behind the content being staggered like that, is that, you know, natural- Oh my gosh, I can't believe I made that. <laughs> is naturally, uh, you're gonna be seeing the first floor a lot more, so ideally there's more variation there. And that kind of ties back to what I was talking about, where it's like, you want to focus the content on, you know, what- what people are really gonna see. And realistically, uh, the most- the thing that the players are going to see the most is this or is this set of levels, right? I mean, some of them may never even get past floor one, so I better be sure that floor one provides a good experience. And I think the later floors having less variation is fine because by that point you're already kind of invested. I mean, in an ideal scenario, every floor would have 20 different levels you could get, but you know, gotta be realistic, right? And it's all about diverting those resources in a in a good place. So. This is floor two. This is the saw blade level, which is the one we happen to get first. Uh, this is the most recent level I've made for this floor. Um, I definitely am really happy with how this floor came together visually. Um, I, uh, I earlier in development, actually until very recently, um, this game didn't have any real backgrounds. It had like the sky that you can see back here, but all of like the like the the panels on the wall and the torches. That's all relatively recent and people told me like it was fine but i just felt like it was missing something and i think i think floor two is the best result of that effort i feel really good about how this all turned out um let's take the maracas i think that'll be funny um yeah so the maracas will duplicate every third passive item you get and there's a lot of like metagaming with like oh what which one should i pick up to like get duplicated that also ties into the stacking system i was talking about earlier so i try to make sure there's a lot to think about with every item i i i there's a quote i subscribe to a lot that every um, every good game is a series of interesting choices, and, um, I think a lot of times that's referring to, like, strategy games, but I do think I really wanted to make a game like this, where, sure, you're doing a lot of simple platforming, but you also are making meaningful decisions, and a really big part of that is making sure that the items are actually interesting and cause you to, you know, make important considerations about which one would be the best one to take for your current situation. Uh, oh, great. All right. So it's, the main reason I added, like, the sell item frog is for th is this situation exactly, where I don't want... Uh, someone to open a chest and then get something that's like not useful to them So even if they get an active item that Replaces the one they have and they don't like as much they can still sell it so they don't get nothing out of it So I don't like this one as much. So we're gonna sell it And then you can get a you can get a gem there, which is great. Um, so this is the re the remote birthday surprise. It's uh, definitely one of my favorite items. Uh, this was a lot of fun to make. So you press it down once, and then you can press the button again to blow it up as a remote mine. Um, I, I had a lot of fun making this one. Yeah, making the items in general was the most fun part of development for me, because especially with this game's pretty limited art style, I was able to prototype them really quickly and have it from, like, idea I had to, like, functional item in sometimes, like, 20 minutes. I mean, some of them were more work. I was talking about the, the, uh, the lightning bolt earlier. That one took a while. Like, the lightning dash, that took probably five hours of work at least. But something like this, this was pretty simple. I think it took, like, one, and some of them take, like, 20 minutes. So, it definitely it was, uh, something that made getting through this game very doable for me, um, was just that, like, the art style is so- I, I like to think it looks nice, but the art style is so simple that I can, you know, I can make, uh, cohesive-looking assets, hopefully, uh, you know, in a- in a really, really limited amount of time, which also helps. If this game had a more complex art style, I also- that- there's so many, like, checks that would have just prevented me from finishing the game. That would be one of them, like, a more complex art style, like, randomization that probably would have like i just would have never released the game at that point you know um i just i really it was just so important when, part of, when starting this project just that i could do something that i could actually finish you know um and i'm very i i'm very hopeful that uh you know i'm very hopeful that the product is good but honestly i also am just happy to have finished it no matter what 
what level of quality it's at. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying quantity over quality or anything like that. But, you know, what's important to me is I think finishing something and actually capping it off is uh, very hard to do. And I talk to a lot of people that are working on amazing stuff, but finishing things is really hard, you know? And I think that's an accomplishment within itself. Oh, great. This is a fun one to show off. So the Scoville Screamer is one of my favorite items in the game. It makes all your projectiles explode, which we can show off with our shockwaves. Uh, this one's a lot of fun. Um, I try not to add too many items that or not even, like, I try to add basically no items that do nothing if you don't have something else going on, right? Like, this is the one exception where sometimes you might not have projectiles, because I think the explosion effect is so exciting that it's worth the rush of trying to, like, seek one out. Like, I think for this one exception that breaks the rule, I think that actually enhances the experience, that you have to, like, hunt down something to take advantage of it, because the reward for it is very sweet. Um, you know, all of these... At this point, all of these, um, all of these shockwaves are gonna, you know, one-shot a bunch of enemies in the game. Um, so I'm very, I'm very happy with how this item turned out. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of fun stuff with it. Uh, and that's really the thing. That's what makes it all worth it for me, is just seeing people do fun stuff with the things I make, you know? I don't care if, like, six people play my game, or even, like, one or two. If they have fun with it, and I get to see them do cool stuff, and it brighten their day in any way. This sounds really cheesy. I'm sorry about that. But it's true, you know? And I think that's what's fun about roguelikes, is you basically get to give people a toolbox to have fun with. And on a certain level, you don't even know the possibilities of what people are going to be able to do. Uh, you know? And I, I, I love that. I, I have people sending me, like, crazy builds they've come up with all the time, and that's really very heartwarming to see. So... Um, anyway, this is, um, this is kind of a- oh, I didn't mean to- I always say, like, I didn't mean to make that mistake. Obviously, I didn't mean to make that mistake, but, you know, I'm trying to- trying to get good footage here. Um, anyway, uh, this is a bit more of a puzzly level, um, where you have to lead these missiles into, um, into the slime blocks. This is very much inspired by the Mega Leg boss fight in Mario Galaxy 1. Uh, it's one of, like, my favorite- encounters in any game ever and i really was like man i love the mechanic where you have to lead like ho heat seeking missiles into something and i was like i can probably make a level out of this right i mean because a lot of this game is is you know I, i'm not trying to say it's not original because I, I do think it is but a lot of this game is me taking elements from things that i already like and you know mashing them together uh because really like i am just trying to make something that i, I would want to play you know, uh, I'm, I'm really into platformers, roguelikes, I love very, you know, like, tight design and stuff like that, and that's... Oh, wait, we can get in there. I, I like... This This encounter is kind of the closest thing this game has to a boss fight, um, because you kind of you kinda get to pick how you want to, like, dismantle it, so... I, I, um, I, uh, bosses are actually another thing. I originally was planning the game to have a bunch of bosses, but I ended up cutting that because I felt like with the focus on platforming, I didn't really think the bosses would fit. And also, again, we come back to scope reasons. I just didn't really think it felt worth it. Um, like, I was like, that's adding, oh, good, we, that's another item we can show off. Uh, we're getting very lucky. I'm getting a lot of very, like, streamable items, which is good. I, you know, I never know. That's the thing, is like, I, I can control this environment to a certain extent, but I never know what I'm, what I'm gonna get from the dice roll, so it's very nice that I could do that. Um, with that said, yeah, so I originally was putting bosses, but I felt like it wasn't, it wouldn't be a good fit for the game anyway, and also just, it would probably, I don't know if it would double the amount of work I needed on the game, but it probably would have been, like, at least a couple months of work, and, like, I think that would be better spent elsewhere, you know, I think the game... And there is going to be a final boss in the final, like, 1.0. I do think it's important that you have something to, like, cap off the game properly. Um, I do think it would be sad if there was if there was nothing. Um, but I was really was going to have, like, a boss to cap off, like, every floor. And I, I don't think that's worth doing. So, and I, I feel good about that decision. I mean, I, the game would not be releasing, you know, in two days if I if I hadn't made that decision. So, that's, that's the thing, you know? It's, it's, all, it's all about that balance. Um... I mean, yeah, this, uh, this is a level I'm pretty proud of. This was also, uh, we got the first level I made ever, and then this is the first one I made for Floor 2, um, and I had to make a lot of new assets, like the conveyor belts and the wrench guys and everything, um, and I had a lot of fun putting this floor together. Um, it was, in general, it was really fun seeing the game kind of evolve the longer I worked on it, and I think this part's kind of a bit of a shame, because the, uh, the, you know, the... You're not going to see this content as much because it's higher up in the tower, um, but I do think I, it, level design was something I got down to a bit of a science as I went on. Because I, I had to do this like 20 times, right? I had a, Oh, and that's right. That's great to see. Um, I had to do it so many times. So by the time I hit floor three, I felt like I really had it down and I felt like 
every, every floor was like a little better than the last one, which on one hand is great because you're rewarded as you go up the tower with more interesting and unique levels. I Hopefully such as this one. Um, but also, it means the best content is the stuff that the least amount of people are going to see, which is a very, very double-edged sword. Um, so, you know, you get a lot of stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll be adding more levels, um, so that'll kind of wrap back around. Um, so that, that's, that is a potentially just a temporary problem, which is good. I'm, uh, I'm glad to... I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad to see that, you know, things are just gonna keep getting better. Um, and that's why I'm very excited about doing early access for this game. Originally, I was very against it, because I didn't want people to feel like I was selling them, like, a half-baked product, but I hit the point... Oh, we've already, we've already seen this one. Let me, let me get rid of this. Um, we've already kind of hit the point where, um, the game feels very releasable to me. It's not fit. it doesn't feel finished, but it does feel like a re releasable. And I got to the point where I really wanted to get it into people's hands to motivate me to keep going on development, you know? Not that I wouldn't have finished it, but I think it was, it was a little depressing working on something that felt like it was like a year or two away from people seeing it, um, right? Because I used to do a lot of free demos. I, I'm kind of notorious for being pretty generous on that department, but even I, I got to the point where even I really couldn't keep providing free content because it was literally like the whole game uh, almost and that wasn't that wasn't good so I had to cut myself off somewhere and I felt like early access was a really good way to keep providing people like public content but also like have a released game so I felt um, I felt good about that uh, this is probably my favorite level in the game so I'm very happy we got this one um, this is called Dash Fruit Smoothie. Um, I, I think um, when I was originally thinking, let's see what we got. Oh man, okay, now we're, I shouldn't have said that we're getting good stuff for this, the recording here, because I kind of jinxed us, because, all right, I've showed, I haven't showed off too much of the boomerang, so we'll switch back to that. Um, we're also just getting a lot of acto items, which is kind of funny. But my original vision for the game, I had like an image in my head of a character like blasting around the screen with all sorts of crazy speed boosts and stuff like that. And you've got like the pogo mechanic mixed in with that. This is this is the closest to that original vision, I would say. Like this is like one of the best parts of game development, just as a whole, is getting to come up with something in your head, right? In a way that like, you know, I, I think most game designers have been playing games for like their whole life and they've thought about games a lot and they've and they've seen other games come together and i'm sure everyone has had an idea for something at one point the uh, the experience of having that idea and then putting it on a screen and being able to play the thing you had in your head is mind-blowing like I, that experience makes everything worth it like yeah like this is pretty much what i had in my head and now i'm playing it in front of you guys like that's that's crazy you know and i just it makes me very happy to be able to say that and be able to do it um so that's here, I think we could get this guy with the boomerang. I could probably show off like a cool trick shot. Boom! There you go. Um, something with the boomerang uh, that I really liked uh, that I got to do was this after image effect when it comes back. So the whole mechanic of the boomerang is that it does double damage on the way back, which encourages you to actually use it like a boomerang and not just like a short range projectile. Um, and I was like, I was, I was very happy to do with the after image effect. There was a lot of, there was a lot of visual effects in this game that I didn't get the chance to really mess with before in my previous work, and I, I felt like I, I really got the chance to spread my wings a lot as an artist. Uh, before this game, I really had not done a ton of art. I, I, I did some a, a good chunk of it on our previous game, Palette Swap, but. You know, I that, I was sharing that work with another artist, and it was just it was that was really my first time doing anything, so I was very new to it, and I made a lot of you know new person mistakes as anybody would. Um, but I felt like I really got to spread my wings on this project, um, and I feel like coming out of it, uh, or part obviously it's not fully done yet, but coming out of it, I feel like uh, I I really got to grow as a as a craftsman in really every aspect, and that's really the thing with game development is. Oh, I missed the... Didn't mean to miss the... Oh, no! Ah, this is going poorly. There we go. Got him. Nice. Okay. This is, this is like, the hardest section of the game, so I might <laughs> I might not be able to do commentary at the same time. Um, But, uh, and that's, that's one of the things I love about game development is you're combining all these disciplines. I just some gems there, but we did do it. Nice. Um, Into one, right? You're combining art and uh, the music done by my wonderful composer, Tom Sanborn. Shout out to him. He's amazing. Um... You know, and like you're combining all these disciplines, design, programming, technical stuff, everything just to get something that works and hopefully is fun. And that process of combining everything, I think when you do it right, it, it just feels amazing. And I, I think there's no medium like games that really, I mean, obviously I, I, you know, I love, oh, good. We've got some more interesting items. Oh, I have two. I could, uh, either of these would be great to show off. Um, 
Let's do let's do block it in. I think this one's a little more unique. Uh, so this one, this is one of the items that took a lot of work. Uh, this one gives you a cursor, uh, which was uh, first for me. I've never really designed something like that before. And then you can place blocks. Uh, I've had a lot of people tell me, whoops, didn't mean to pick that up. I've had a lot of people tell me this is the best item in the game. I might need to nerf it, but this kind of ties back into the thing where I just, I love seeing what people can do with the sandbox in this game. And I think this is probably the item that like get lets people get creative the most just by itself. And I, I love getting to see that. So I don't know. I might not nerf it just because it's, it's so funny. And it's so, I love seeing the, the creativity that people have. Um, so we'll see if it's really oppressive, I'll nerf it. Um, but yeah, that's really the thing is it's just, it's such a combination of disciplines, you know, and I had such a great time of the experience of working on this game, getting to combine all of those disciplines. I really, I had a, I had a fantastic time with that. So I'm very grateful to have had that experience. Um, yeah, actually it's funny. This is the first level I built for floor three. So uh, we've gotten to see kind of all the beginnings here. Um, so one mechanic you'll probably notice I use a lot is I love the experience of jumping on a ton of things in a row. Um, like just like all these cannonballs, like one after another. I just, I don't know. Every time I, I was talking about earlier about how I get an image for a game in my head. Even before I had the image of like you going through speed boost, my main thing is I just wanted you to be able to pogo off stuff. I was like, I think that inherent movement would just be really fun, and I hope I'm right, and basically this entire game was built on that gamble of I hope I'm right. Uh, so this is a good example here. I can show off how you can kind of use the items to skip certain sections if you'd like to, because um, that's the thing is, uh, another thing that I think helps with the repeated levels is if you have a different build of items, you can play them differently, and oh, I am <laughs> bundling this a little, but there we go. So you can kind of do this and skip this whole section. This is a little insane. Like this item is very powerful, but even with some weaker ones, like there's lots of places where you can you can get like a double jump and skip like sections where you'd have to like jump on something else. You can just skip it entirely. There's a lot of places that I'm hoping justify replaying stuff because you can do it differently. You can think about it differently. So we got A rank. All right. Uh, it would have been crazy if I could have gotten an S for this. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. So that's that's a full run of the game. I have a couple more aspects we'll show off real quick. Um, probably an area I'm the most proud of is the shop. Uh, getting the permanent upgrades for this game uh, right was, I'm not saying I necessarily got them right, but tr attempting to get them right was really hard, you know? Because uh, I think there's a lot of uh, roguelites that have um, meta progression that makes you feel like you have to grind to like you know really be able to finish the game where it's just like you're at such a numbers disadvantage without doing it that like what's the point right so i really wanted to focus on upgrades that don't make you feel like that so really the only the biggest two um the biggest two like permanent ones is just increasing your health and then giving you a choice between items so it, it doesn't make it so you do more damage or you're like destroy like running through the game at like a ridiculous pace like it just it gives you a little more leeway it like it pushes you along a little at a way that makes it so it gives you something to work for and it makes sure that everyone can eventually finish the game but the difficulty is very much designed around like the character's base ability like with no upgrades so i'm hoping that shines through um and you know i ends up motivating people to play and unlock stuff because I, I do want there to be stuff for you to work for but also not make it feel futile until you work for that stuff and that's the balance that's very hard to hit with systems like this um so luckily i've built up a lot of money so we can buy a few of these um and then i will show off one of the uh sets of armor um so one thing with the armor uh we're just gonna go down to the basement here for a little hidden section um something i really don't like in games is when uh, you have a, a piece of equipment where you hate the way it looks, but you really like what it does. So you have to look like a way you don't like in order to like do the thing that you do. So I decided to separate uh, those two things. So when you unlock a piece of armor, you get like an associated ability with that armor, but you can mix and match. So I could keep like the default purple armor and I could still have the green, I, I call it essence. Um, like the the armor's ability so that way not only do you, can you mix and match and you can look however you want while doing whatever you want but also it encourages you to buy sets of armor that you don't like the way you look right because like i might hate the way the zombie armor looks and i would never spend my money on it but like i go down here and it's like oh revives you once wow i want that so yeah i think uh, this, this is kind of another way to of uh, pushing um 
you know, pushing people to replay the game a little more, uh, because there's, at least, uh, you know, the armors aren't necessarily groundbreaking, but they do give you a bit of a different experience that I'm hoping will, you know, get, give people that encouragement. So, real quick, I'll show off one level of Nightmare Mode, uh, real quick, just to show that off, and then also, this is the Choose Your Item screen, I spent a lot of time on this, I'm very proud of how it turned out, oh, and I never got to show off Jester Bomb, so this is a great little system for us, and we even got a level that we haven't played yet, man, everything's just going, going my way. So, um, yeah, the Jester Bomb is definitely one of my favorite items. It's really fun to just kind of go bananas and, uh, just shoot a bunch of stuff below you. I, I get a lot out of that. Um, and yeah, so this is, a this is, a like, the, the Thwomp level, as my community has kind of dubbed it, which I think is really funny. Um, which it, it completely is, like, they're right. Um, and this is kind of another way that the items let you do something different. This one has a lot of different things you can do. It's very multimodal. So if you use it on the ground, you get, like, a huge bomb jump. And then if you use it in the air, you get two little things that you can throw down, which I think is a lot of fun. Very, very downwell-inspired in the way that you can kind of, like, slow your descent with it, too. Um, but I really like... Uh, I like... I like... I try to make sure I design items, especially active ones, in a way where they help with both combat and platforming. Because you might have noticed, this game doesn't have, like, the biggest focus on combat, and that was very much, like, intentional. But what that does mean is, if I added a bunch of items that were all about, like, killing enemies, I, they, they would run into the problem where they just wouldn't feel very impactful, because you're not fighting enemies, like, that much, you know? Like, they're there, it's important to be able to do more damage, but it's not... It's not something that you absolutely need. Um, so I try to limit how many combat items I add, or in the case of things like this, where it certainly is helpful in combat, there's a lot of other stuff you can do with it. It helps with platforming and jumps, so that way, like, you never... You never feel like what you pick up is useless. That's the biggest thing. And obviously that's easier said than done, but I, I hope I've done a good job in uh, nailing that balance to the to the best of my ability. Um, so yeah, we're gonna finish out this level. Uh, just kinda tie the tie the knot on this. Oh, good. I never really got to show off the Mitosis Baraka's last run, so I'm hoping I get to a little more here. Um, but yeah, um, and I, so uh, you'll kind of see as we go up this level here, I mean, I, not that this is the first level I've showed you, but um, I, I, it was a lot of fun getting to take like basic concepts like, oh, there's swamps, and then like, you know, expanding on them a little, right? Like, oh, now there's swamps that you can't kill and you have to use them to jump on things. And I, I think that's kind of what I was talking about earlier where I was saying about getting it down to an exact science is I really wanted to, you know, I eventually got to the point where I, I had a good idea, I felt, of how to develop concepts properly, right? And really make sure that over the course of a level, you got to see an idea expanded to the best of its ability. Um, and that was something that I think was an achievement of development and something I, I also just really had a ton of fun with. So I'm hoping that shows through in the final product. Um, anyway, uh, I'm not going to show off another uh, whole run, especially because we've seen some of these levels before. Um, but yeah, uh, really just thank you so much for taking a look at the game. Uh, it, really, it really means the world to me. Um, and I just can't wait to release, no matter how the game does. Uh, it just has been a complete blast working on. Um, so uh, thank you, and I'll see you for lunch. Bye, everybody.